I want you to come along with me. It's very windy out here, and I'm going to show you something extraordinary. Now, why am I excited about this? It's because I wrote about this town called Ein Karem in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel. And it was in the section where I talked about Mary traveling to the hills of Judea to visit Elizabeth. And that is the home of Elizabeth and her husband and where John the Baptist was born. Well, several things happened like this when I was writing the book. For example, Mary Magdalene's synagogue was being unearthed at the time that I was having revelations about Mary Magdalene and was writing all of those things in the book. And because the synagogue was unearthed at that time, it was 2009, they, um, they let me use the uh, photographs of the excavation in my book of Mary Magdalene's synagogue. And it was totally extraordinary that that happened. But the thing that just, I just ran across this story from 2015. Now my book happened to be published on 5515, which are all Torah numbers. And about July 1st, the story came out that in that little town, that little village of Ein Karem, they actually found underneath someone's house an ancient 2,000-year-old mikvah. Do I think that this could be John the Baptist's house? The house of Elizabeth and her husband? That Mary came to visit Elizabeth? I think so. I think there's more to this story and these people are living over the top of this excavation that the Israeli Antiquities Authority is helping them to manage. And they were doing renovations of their house and they had this staircase that went down in their living room and it went down to this second temple period mikvah and they found pottery and other items down there. But I think this needs to be looked at as the possible home of Elizabeth where Mary went to visit her when she was pregnant with Jesus. So I'm gonna go inside now and tell you the rest of the story because it's a bit windy out here. And I thought you'd enjoy this. So come along with me and I'll tell you the rest of the story. Well, that's a lot better. It's pretty chilly out there with the snow still on the ground in some places and cold wind feels like an arctic blast off of a glacier. Um, I thought you would be interested in this story and I want to go to Luke 1 and starting in verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of these things which were told her from the Lord. And then we have the song of Mary and this all happened in the house of Zacharias and Elizabeth. Now you know Zacharias was in the temple and he was burning the incense on the altar and you have to know that the incense represented the tears of the people who were praying. So these went up on an altar as the tears of the, the people and since Elizabeth was barren up to that point 
Zechariah was going in there in the temple offering the incense and he he was probably shedding tears over the fact that his wife was barren. So then the angel appeared to him at the right side of the incense altar and he basically said that the Lord had heard his prayer. He saw their tears and he answered them and sent the angel. But we have in this place in the hills of Judea where Zacharias and Elizabeth lived, this is where the song of Mary took place that's so famous. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. And he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. So this was the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and Mary stayed with her for three months there. And if Mary stayed three months, and this discovery in that little town, Ein Karim, is actually linked to Zechariah and Elizabeth's house with a mikvah, and of course John the Baptist later came baptizing to reveal the Messiah to Israel, then this would be more of a significant find than has been announced and because it's located inside, underneath the living room floors of this home in that village, then not the full story has been told. Now, what I find fascinating is I wrote some miraculous things about these events in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, and I talked about the village of Ein Karem and that that's where Mary went to visit Elizabeth and Zacharias. So I'm really stunned that there was this discovery in the same year that my book was published, 2015. Um, I would like to read now, knowing that Zacharias was in the temple, I want you to hear Zechariah's story. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving his priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the incense altar. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. So can you imagine he's offering the incense, the little um, 
pieces of frankincense are representative of the tears of the people. So their tears and their prayers were heard by God and he sent the angel to announce that she would no longer be barren, but not only bear a son, but he would he would be coming to prepare the way of the Messiah of the Lord and having them cleanse themselves in the baptism which is reminiscent of the mikvah bath. The angel goes on to say, and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God and he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord and Zechariah said to the angel how shall I know this for I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced in years and the angel answered and said to him I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings but behold you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time and the people waited for Zecharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned to them and remained speechless. And so it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Don't you think that's really awesome of God to send the angel Gabriel to say, God has seen your tears, you're offering your tears on the altar, and he's heard your prayer for your wife to conceive and bear a son, and now she's going to, and he's going to be great among men, and he's going to turn the hearts of the children of Israel to follow God, and he's going to make the Messiah known to them through the baptism of water that now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and having come in the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, or Yeshua, and he will be great. And he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm, I've not known a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And then Mary said, 
Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So that's when Mary went to visit Elizabeth in Ein Karem. And this is where their house was. And this mikvah was just found in 2015 under this person's house. So we see after this, the birth of John the Baptist. And it says in verse 57 of Luke 1, Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So they saw that God had answered their prayers as their tears were lifted up on the incense altar. And I just think that's so fantastic. And so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zecharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There's no one among your relatives who's called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. And then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. All those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. So can you imagine in this Ein Karem neighborhood where they just found this ancient 2,000-year-old mikvah with stairs going down to it and pottery and everything, that perhaps even the clay of these pots heard the rejoicing of these neighbors, heard Mary's song. The mikvah, you know, it was spoken out loud in the neighborhood. And now in that neighborhood, they're unearthing this place. And I think there's something extraordinarily incredible that happened there, but it's not it's not being developed or shown anymore because it was in someone's home underneath the floorboards. So now we have Zechariah's prophecy. Now his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people. And of course, salvation is Yeshua to give knowledge of Yeshua to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace and so the child grew and became strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. So all the neighbors, all the neighbors rejoiced and came together with Elizabeth and Zechariah. And they were rejoicing that God had heard her prayers. And she was going to have this son who was going to be a prophet of the highest. And prepare and go before the face of the Lord to announce the coming of the Messiah to Israel. She was a blessed person and all the hills of Judea probably rejoiced at these sayings. And 
you know, I just think it's extraordinary what's happening in this village right now. So let me tell you what happened in 2015. So my book that had their story in it was published in May of 2015, May 5th, 2015, and this was printed July 1st, 2015. So within very short order of these revelations that I had in my book about John the Baptist, this came out right after that. And it's almost like God gave a confirmation by unearthing this thing. And this was uh, I-24 News TV, Israel, and it says 2,000 year old Jewish ritual bath found under a family's living room. Ancient mikvah revealed during renovations in a private house in Ein Karem, Jerusalem. A 2,000 year old Jewish ritual bath or mikvah was discovered below a living room floor during renovations carried out in a private house in the neighborhood of Ein Karem in Jerusalem, Israeli Antiquities Authority declared. When the living room's rug was rolled up during the renovations, a pair of wooden doors were revealed beneath the rug, concealing an ancient ritual bath. The mikvah, which is complete and quite large, length 3.5 meters, width 2.4 meters, depth 1.8 meters, is rock-hewn and meticulously plastered according to the laws of purity appearing in the Jewish halakha. Now John the Baptist came before the face of the Lord, baptizing them. Don't you think that there would be a mikvah that he would have been exposed to as he was growing up? I think there's something way deeper to this discovery. And it needs to be brought forth because it's incredible. And it says, a staircase leads to the bottom of the immersion pool. Pottery vessels dating to the time of the second temple, first century CE or AD, and traces of fire that might constitute evidence of the destruction of 66 to 70 AD were discovered inside the bath. In addition, fragments of stone vessels were found, which were common during the Second Temple period, because stone cannot be contaminated and remains pure, said the Israeli Antiquities Authority press release. According to Amit Re'em, Jerusalem District archaeologist, such instances of finding antiquities beneath a private home can happen only in Israel and Jerusalem in particular. Beyond the excitement and the unusual story of the discovery of the mikvah, its exposure of archaeological importance, Ein Karem is considered a place sacred to Christianity in light of the identification with the city of Judah, the place where, according to the New Testament, John the Baptist was born and where his pregnant mother, Elizabeth, met Mary, mother of Jesus. Despite these identifications, the archaeological remains in Ein Karem and the surrounding area, which are related to the time when these events transpired, the Second Temple period, are few and fragmented. The discovery of the ritual bath reinforces the hypothesis there was a Jewish settlement from the time of the Second Temple located in the region of what is today Ein Karem. And I wrote all about Elizabeth and Zacharias living in Ein Karem in my book. And now this discovery has happened. Released the same time frame as my book revealing about John the Baptist in great detail, things that have never been known before. And I am just totally blown away. And in my book, you will see the words Ein Karem, because I talked about this. And when I found this article, 
I, I was just, I was stupefied. I was like, why on earth do they not research this more and do a dig? I mean, this needs to be done because this is a more powerful discovery than anyone is letting on. And we are at the time when the Lord has one by one since the late 1800s revealed archaeological discoveries dealing with Jesus over and over and over, including the Shroud of Turin image being turned into a positive portrait of him from basically a photographic negative that could never have been done in ancient times. And plus, as I told you, the image is only on the very surface of the fibers and the fibers are one-tenth the size of a human hair. The things you have to know about the shroud is that the blood was on the shroud first and then the image. Is that stunning or what? And there's a whole lot more to that story. But I am so excited about this and I believe that this could either be the location of their home or, you know, maybe it was the village mikvah that they all went to. I don't know, but the fact that they found stone pottery, which is ritually pure, and the mikvah was plastered according to Halakha, ritually pure laws of Judaism. The village was not very big, believe me. So there couldn't have been that many people in the village. They probably all knew each other. You know, what if it was a village of 10 people for all we know? And Mary was there, the mother of Jesus, and that's where she sang the song. And that's where the babe leaped in her womb. So I hope that the IAA does more archeological research on this discovery and the fact that the words Ein Karim are in my book, showing that that's where they lived, I think it's extraordinary. And I'm so thrilled and excited, as you can tell. So I just wanted to bring you here to finish the rest of the story, because this is exciting. So what they did to preserve it in their living room is they built double doors on the floor that are wood and they can raise them up. You know, it's kind of like a, what you do when you had a cellar and, you know, you would lift up the cellar doors and go down the steps. Well, that's what they did to cover over it to protect it. And the Israeli Antiquities Authority is helping them to preserve it. Now I wanted to read this from the Times of Israel. And it says, Jerusalem family finds 2,000 year old ritual bath under living room. Discovery in traditional hometown of John the Baptist paints a presence of Jewish village during the Second Temple era. This was posted also July 1st, 2015 by Elon Ben Zion. Home renovations usually entails picking paints buying furniture and dealing with contractors. For the Shimshoni family living in Jerusalem's Ein Karem neighborhood, it meant calling in archaeologists after stumbling upon a perfectly preserved 2,000-year-old ritual bath under their living room. Last week, the Israeli Antiquities Authority finished excavating the subterranean bath, which archaeologist Amit Rem said Wednesday was a significant find and may have belonged to a private home in a first century Jewish village. The ritual bath adheres to Jewish halakhic requirements and, as I said, measures 1.8 meters, which is 5 feet 11 inches deep, 3.5 meters long, and 2.4 meters wide. More intriguingly, it lends some support to Christian tradition linking Ein Karem today, a quaint neighborhood clinging to a hill on Jerusalem's southwestern edge with the birthplace of John the Baptist. 
Starting in the 6th century, Christians began associating the town in the hill country of Judea, mentioned in the book of Luke as the birthplace of John the Baptist, the mentor of Jesus with Ein Karem. The village is home to the Catholic Church of St. John the Baptist, dedicated to his birthplace. All these events took place 2,000 years ago in the days of the Second Temple in Jerusalem. But until now, we didn't have archaeological evidence supporting the notion that there was a Jewish community in Ein Karem during that period, he said, standing next to the gaping maw of the mikveh in the Shimshoni's living room. Previously, the archaeological remains in Ein Karem from that period were fragmentary, limited to a handful of graves, bits of a wall, an olive press, and a mikveh. The discovery of this mikveh strengthens the hypothesis that in the area of Ein Karem today there was a second temple Jewish settlement, he said. While Rem was reluctant to draw any direct associations between John the Baptist and the ritual bath found in the Shimshoni home. He said its discovery pointed to the presence of religious Jews who were fastidious about matters of ritual purity within the soil filling the mikveh which plunges about 10 feet below ground archaeologists found potsherds and remnants of stone vessels from the first century. According to Jewish tradition, stone vessels do not contract religious impurity, whereas ceramic ones do, and once contaminated must be destroyed. Here's some pictures of the pottery. Maybe this is the town of Judea mentioned in Luke. We don't know. Oh, come on. It really is, I'm telling you. Archaeologists also found a burnt layer, possibly from the destruction during the Jewish revolt against Rome between 66 and 70 AD, Rem said, and it had yet to be dated. Ariah Shimshoni, who owns the house with her husband Tal, said that they'd bought the home several years ago, and like many of the old Arab houses in Ein Karem, it required some fixing up. We started the work getting rid of layer after layer of flooring and pipes, she said, and at some point while the workers were breaking up flooring, the jackhammer disappeared. It just plunged downward. It had broken through the ancient limestone ceiling of the mikveh. They stopped work and began digging by hand, unawares of what laid below. Upon realizing what they'd found, she said that they were concerned about going through the bureaucratic procedure of reporting the fines, but this thing gave us no rest. In the end, Araya and Tall called the IAA and reported this discovery. The IAA on Wednesday awarded the Shimshonis a certificate of appreciation for reporting the find as required by law. The Shimshoni family invited the press to their home where they shifted some furniture and removed a carpet to reveal a trap door leading down into the dank and stuffy bath.
It still fills up with water in the winter, Tal Shimshoni said. Where it comes from, we don't know. The dehumidifier in the corner was working overtime, and he said it sucked up four liters of water per day. Finding antiquities under a private home or public building only happens in Israel, and Jerusalem particularly, Reem said. Every time, it's thrilling anew. And having written about Ein Karem being the house of Elizabeth and Zacharias, where Mary visited, in my book, to have this come out only July 1st, it was barely two months after my book was published. And I believe this definitely could be the home of John the Baptist. Because he came baptizing with water, and there was the mikvah right there from 2,000 years ago. So I had to read you that other second story. It had a little more information and the pottery shards were shown. What if those pieces of pottery were used by Elizabeth and Zacharias and Mary and John the Baptist? What a thrilling thought that is. I hope you found this extraordinarily exciting Thank you for watching. Thanks for supporting me and my channel and my work. I greatly appreciate the help. And God bless you, and I'll talk to you later.